hello everyone hope all of you are doing well in today's video we are discuss about the input and the steady state analysis of the gravitational water vortex turbine in today's we will also discuss about the input and output set of the gravitational water vortex turbine so let us start with the cfd fluent analysis double click on geometry you will, you will get the import geometry option and browse the 3D geometry which you have modeled by the Swedish or any other software. Like double click on it and you will get the design model option and open it. You need to click on the generate option so you will get the your 3D model geometry. Okay, let's delete the three parts so rename it. First, let's say it's a booster runner, so rename as a booster runner. It's a casing, so it's rename as a casing. You can name it as you can. So, go to the file and replace the input and close the design model here is a mesh option and double click on it and click on edit after some interval time you get like a screen like this wait for the geometry ok first we have to name the faces select the face and create the name selection as a inlet ok then go to the name selection and hide the face so can you can name the inner part of the gravitational water vortex turbine ring so name as a output outlet you can set as outlet ok hide the face there is a multiple option in the skin you can see so use which you think is necessary for you so select the face uh, then click the control and select the faces while you are selecting the multiple faces in for the first faces you select the face and for the remaining faces you should click the control button and then paste onto the remaining faces then you will get like this While selecting the multiple faces, you should review that all of your multiple faces are selecting or not. And then go to the create name section and let's say its name is a casing. And hide the face. Now we have the inner part or say runners. In the runner, you have to be very very careful because there is a two interface inter uh, let's say the inter interface of a stator or the rotor, which is difficult to select the all the part at the one time. Let's say the interface of the a 
stator one and hide the face. As you can see, oh, there is a mistake in selecting the face. So delete it. And again, we have to select the faces. When you are selecting the faces, you have to be very careful. Otherwise, you have to you have to reselect the faces. Okay. Let's say let's create the name section interface of the stator one. And hide the face. Create the name interface of the rotor one. There are two faces interface of the rotor stator because it is a rotatory domain of the booster runner stator. So for the main runner, okay. Create name as a interface interface of the stator two. I did, and then again select the faces for the rotor. interface of the rotor to hide the face oh oh again we have I have made mistake while selecting the face so delete it again And reselect the faces. It is okay. Reselect the faces. It seems good. Uh, there is a two section where I forget to select those sections. So interface of rotor two, okay. And hide the face. Okay. We have the two blades, male for runners and the Booster runner, so we have to select it. Now go to this more 
keyboard section and there is a box selection and select for the main runners and select the head name section and let's say it's a booster runner booster blades and again go to the mode and select the box box selection and select it as a runner blade okay and hide the faces so naming is done so again we have to click on it and and show the hidden faces and then we then we go to the image analysis and let's say the 9 meter and generate the mesh okay mesh analysis is on progress let's wait for the result okay then go to the aesthetics section and let's say it is a 544 so fluent only except uh, 512k number of nodes so we have to reduce the element size and create then again the generate the mesh analysis and we get the oh it's pretty good and then update the mesh analysis you can see in the mesh analysis the mesh transaction was fully succeed so now go to the in the setup section and edit let's just start the setup of the gravitation water vortex turbine so in the model or uh, steady state analysis and we can see that the the gravity is the positive negative y axis so we put the minus 9 point over there and in the model we have used the viscous model as the key omega and select those and go to the material as you can see there is only air and the aluminium so go to in the fluid we need the water as a material so click on the chemical formula and fluid database and then we get here is the option for the water liquid and the copy it okay and close it and close it and we get the water liquid as a material and select the water liquid in the cell zone condition there is a three zone booster casing and the main runner where booster and main runner are the rotatory domain and the casing is the stationary domain so select as a water as we discussed the booster runner is the rotatory zone so select the frame motion here we can see the the motion is the in the room as we can see here is the angular speed as a input parameter so the simple concept is that the water flow in the gravitational water vortex turbine it gives the angular velocity and torque as a output parameter but we in the ANSYS we have to do we have, what we have to do is to give the angular velocity as an input parameter so we have the one trick to getting the angular velocity of the gravitational water vortex ring as an input parameter so what we did what we did uh, first 3D model of the gravitational water vortex turbine in the solid work without including the main runner and booster runner as we can see in the figure. And then we have done the mesh analysis setup. In the setup, 
material is the same as a water liquid and the cell, there is a boundary condition there is a cell zone condition where is the impurity part where is the stationary part which is the stationary part and run the calculation we have run the we have, we have already done these parts so you can do we have already done this part before okay let's and we have got the velocity range okay for mpt gravitational water ring and then we can see here there is a maximum and minimum minimum is 1.31 and maximum velocity is 5.21 and from the from the 3d model of the gravitational water ring you get the maximum and minimum radius and when multiplying the minimum radius minimum radius with the maximum velocity and maximum radius with the minimum velocity you get the range of the angular velocity uh, in my case in my project i have get the range of angular velocity 1 rad to 4 rad per second we use the we use the impt gravitation water vortex turbine because the angular velocity is not for the runner it, it, it's for the gravitational vortex vortex create the angular velocity so we have first calculate the angular velocity range for the particular ring and then we have we have to set up as an input parameter otherwise we cannot do the project for the 3d simulation we have to give the angular velocity as an input parameter so we have to do this we have to apply these tricks getting the angular velocity so it is a frame motion which is a rotating part of the uh, so we have already discussed about this and so select uh, omega omega as an input parameter here so selecting as an input parameter we have already get the range of the one rate to four rate per second in an input gravitational water ring without including the runners and so set as a minimum uh, omega is one so apply it as a parameter the casing casing is the stationary domain so only we have to choose the water liquid as so apply it and go to the main runner main runner is just to is also a rotatory domain so we have to select the water liquid as a material and frame motion frame motion and select as we have selected in the booster runner we have to we have one trick which uh, we have showed that they have to get the angular velocity in the most of the cases of gravitational water vortex turbine um, students are confused how to get the angular velocity so we have already discussed that the how to get angular velocity of the gravitational water vortex ring hope you understand it we we have not get actually got the actual angular velocity but we have get the range of angular velocity maximum and minimum uh, velocity of angular velocity and we can find the angular velocity and turn for the particle let's uh, wait for the final results we will show it in the uh, let's go to the boundary condition here is a uh, multiple option so inlet let's say i choose the mass flow rate as an inlet parameter let's say the mass flow rate is a 4, 4 kg per second you can see it as you want outlet i have changed the water is the pressure outlet you can choose there is a multiple option in the uh, option section so i have choose the target mass flow rate because the, we have to uh, also take a look about the conservation mass conservation so for the mass conservation it should be the targeted mass at the 
knowing about the methods, methods take care of the simple method and take care of the other as it is the second model. Now run run the for the iteration you can this check case section you can check the whether your mirrors is okay or not and we have selected the number of iteration 100 but while you are uh, project is progress you should take the number of iteration around the 1000 or 500 which will give you the best result for the shortage of time i have only taken the 100 number of iteration okay my iteration is done so go to the page and go to the result section the exhibition keep you new and uh, let's say the torque on the booster booster blade actually and let's select fox function and okay wait. let's select the CFD post here the torque where torque is the y axis we kept seeing there and select the location where we want the blade of the booster blade and we get the torque of the booster blade and set as the output parameter again select the new and let's say torque on the main runner or booster or runner blade okay and the process is the same location and the runner blade we have to select the runner blade where is the runner blade okay we got it and apply and set as a output parameter after selection we go to the parameter set as we get the angular velocity ranges from the one before by increasing the 0.25 rate per second Per second we have select the input parameter at range one one two four rate per second as it is and select tick and after the update all design point we get we have to copying those into the actual for the getting the power for the calculation of a power it is easy to calculate in the excel so you excel we have already done this you get like this angular velocity uh, torque so we have to calculate the power then how we can calculate power? I am showing you minus so we have to add the torque of the both main runner and the booster runner and multiply it into the angular velocity corresponding angular velocity and we will get the power for the each angular velocity after getting the power for each angular velocity copy the angular velocity with the power into the new excel and we get like this as we can see in the as we increasing the angular velocity power is also increasing up to 3.25 after the 3.25 power is decreasing so power is increasing up to only 3.25 so 3.25 is our angular velocity for testing and 0.2.64 is a maximum power we can get from the our testing if you really like the video please like and subscribe the video thank you so much